A very good morning to you. Good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to the newspaper review for August the 16th of, of um, the 16th of August 2023. My name is Moses and this is Prime Media Studios. Let us move on quickly to Vanguard. Vanguard this morning, the top story on Vanguard says contributors to inflation rise. Inflation hit 24.08% as Nigerians struggle with higher food prices. Inflation hit 24.08% as Nigerians struggle with higher food prices. Um, we're going to take a picnic on, on that. Nigeria's annual inflation rate rose to 24.08% in July, the highest in 18 years, driven by higher prices of food items, increased transport fares, reflecting the increasing struggle of how to, to meet daily feeding needs, worsened by the impact of fuel subsidy, removal, and continued depreciation of the Naira. The higher inflation rate, which represents 1.29% points from 22.79% in June, was caused by increases in prices of basic food items, including oil and fat, bread and cereals, fish, potatoes, yam and other tubers of foods, meat, vegetables, milk, cheese and eggs. As a result, food inflation reached to 26.98%, the highest level in 18 years since September 2005. Also reflecting the impact of fuel subsidy removal on cost of transportation and related services, Cool inflation all terms, less farm produce and energy, rose to 20.47% in July, the highest in 19 years, up about 0.41% points from 20.06% in June. Disclosing this in its Consumer Price Index report for August, the National Bureau of Statistics said that increases in prices of food and non-alcoholic beverages were responsible for most of the rise in the deadline inflation, in the headline inflation rather, rate to 24.08% in July, followed by housing water, electricity, gas, and other fuel, 4.03%, clothing and footwear, transport, furnishings, household equipment, and maintenance. The NBS said in July 2023, the headline inflation rate rose to 24.08% relative to June 2023, headline inflation rate which was 22.79%. Looking at the government, the July 2023 headline inflation rate showed an increase of 1.29% point when compared to June 2023 headline inflation rate. On a year-on-year -year basis, the headline inflation rate was 4.44% point higher compared to the rate accorded, recorded rather in July 2022, which was 19.64%. This shows that the headline inflation rate year-on-year -year basis increased in July 2023 when compared to the same month in preceding year. Example, July 2022. And that's it. Um, now, um, the, the, the same newspaper, Vanguard newspaper, still you know, actually named the contributors to inflation rise. They said housing, water, electricity, gas and other other uh, items and um, that took a whole 47 percent now if you look at the screen education took about um 21 percent that's 0.95 um, you know, percent alcoholic beverages tobacco and cola nuts took about and cola rather took about 0.26 percent recreation and culture took about 0.17 percent and also health took about 0.72 percent and last but not the least clothing and footwear took about 1.03 percent as well as transportation miscellaneous goods and services and um, phone bills they all took about um you know all of them took about um, some certain amount of percentage and it all hit to um, up to 24.08%. You know, and, and Nigerians are struggling to get food, to daily food, and also housing, um, water, electricity supply, and um, data to, 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 to surf the internet and all other, all other things that concerns, um, you know, monetary values. So we, we just, we're just sitting down and um, you know, 
pleading to the government to make sure that um, the inflation rate doesn't even hit and uh, move further. It just remains on 24% or even reduced to some certain amount. We don't want um, um, our inflation to also rise further. That's that on their inflation rate. And a news following that says we'll maintain petrol price without subsidy reversal. We'll maintain petrol price without subsidy reversal, says Tinubu. And also West Africa military chiefs to discuss Niger crisis this week. West Africa military chiefs to discuss Niger crisis this week. All other news following AIG Dora decorates 23 promoted officers in Sekutu. That's for the Nigerian police force. AIG Dora decorates 23 promoted officers in Sekutu. Tinubu expresses sadness over death of military officers in helicopter crash in Niger state. Tinubu expresses sadness over death of military officers in, Niger, in helicopter crash in Niger state. Akwai Bom Guba Tribunal parties adopt final addresses. Party adopt final addresses. Federal government commences construction of first Avia Kago village. <clears throat> Federal, I beg your pardon. Federal government commences construction of first Avia Kago village. Matawali's aid calls for government, Governor Lawal's resignation cites incompetence. Matawali's aid calls for Governor Lawal's resignation cites incompetence. All of that you can find on the Vanguard newspaper, the top story on Vanguard newspaper. You could uh, visit their online online site or visit their, their physical site for more details on the headlines. Let us move on to channels this morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Top story there says 6.9 billion procurement fraud. 6.9 billion procurement fraud. You know, FG arranged the MFLA and allies on Thursday. Now, recall that yesterday the federal government had to withdraw um, his <clears throat> its firearms charge against um, the suspended CBN governor, Godwin Emefiele. And right now, we have, um, you know, drawn up 20 more, you know, charges against Emefiele. And one of them is um, 6.9 billion Naira procurement fraud. Let's take a look at the details. 6.9 billion Naira procurement fraud. FG arranged Emefiele and allies on Thursday. The suspended Apex Bank chief will be arraigned alongside a female central bank employee, Sadatu Yaro, and her company, April 16th, 16th Investment Limited. Suspended CBN Chief Governor Amifele leaves the Federal High Court in Okoye, Lagos, on Tuesday, July 25th, 2023, and about to enter a waiting DSS vehicle despite an order of the courts granting him bail and ordering his remand into prison at a prison in Ekoi. You know, the federal high court now came up. The federal government will on Thursday arrange suspended, um, you know, bank, Central Bank of Nigeria Governor Godwin Emefiele and his associates for 6.9 billion naira procurement fraud at the federal cap capital territory high court in Abuja. Emefiele will be arraigned alongside a female CBN employee, Sadatu Yare and her companies, April 16th, 16th, Investment Limited on 20 charges of procurement fraud conspiracy and conferring corrupt advantages on his associates. The embattled Apex Bank chief, who has been in detention since he was suspended from office on June 9th, 2023, was accused of conferring corrupt advantages on Yaru, a director in April 16th, 16th Investment Limited. The offence is contrary to Section 19 of the Corrupt Practices and Other Related Offences in Act 2000. The section reads, and I quote, any public officer who uses his office or position to gratify or confer <clears throat> any corrupt or unfair advantage upon himself or any relation or associate of the public officer or any other public officer shall be guilty of an offence and shall on conviction be liable to imprisonment for five years without an option of fine. In the charges signed by the Director of Public Prosecutions, Federal Ministry of Justice, Mohamed Abubakar, Deputy Director of Public Prosecution, 
Mrs. Inkiru Jones Nebo and eight other ministerial officials. The three accused persons were alleged to have bought a fleet of over 998 exotic vehicles and armored buses valued at about 6.9 billion naira. Some of the vehicles bought between 2018 and 2020 included 84 Toyota Hilux vehicles, 10 armored Mercedes-Benz buses, three Toyota Land Cruisers, and one Toyota Avalon car. Count one reads that you, Godwin Ifan Yenefiele, male adult in sometime 2018, within the jurisdiction of this honorable of this honorable court, did use your position as governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria to confer Malan Yaru, a staff of member of the Central Bank of Nigeria by rewarding <clears throat> by awarding a contract for the supply of 37 Toyota Hilux vehicles at the cost of 854.7 million only to April 1616 16th Investment Limited, a company in which she's a director and thereby committed an offense. And that's it on um, a Mephilis case. Let us now move in to the next headline. Niger Prime Minister in charge as US Russia urged diplomatic op option in crisis. Niger Prime Minister in charge as US and Russia urged diplomatic option in crisis. Wike visits Ganduje congratulates ex governor gov ex governor on becoming APC chair. Wike visits Ganduje congratulates ex governor on becoming APC chair. Lagos issues flood alert for Etiosa or Joe Badagri Ikeja and Ikoi. Lagos issues flood alert for Etiosa or Joe Badagri and Ikoi. Axis of Lagos State. That's that on on um channels. Let us now move on to the nation this morning. The top story on the nation says petrol price won't go up. Subsidy removal stays. Petrol price won't go up. Subsidy removal fails. Men. Petrol price won't go up. I think that's a good one. Subsidy removal stays and that's a bad one. Other, other news, it says we shut down NAF Jet Group claims responsibility. We shut down NAF Jet Group claims responsibility. Shaibu can't destabilize my government, says Opaseki. Shaibu can't destabilize my government, says Opaseki. Airbnb holding stakeholders, okay, one around 50 billion naira rights issue. Airbnb holdings shareholders, Okay, 150 billion naira rights issue. Living wage coming soon. Snickers Abbas, Speaker Abbas rather, assures Nigerians. Living wage coming soon. Speaker Abbas, Abbas assures Nigerians. Let us now move on to the Daily Trust this morning. Niger coup, ISWAP migrating from Sahel to Lake Chad, says Northwest. ISWAP migrating from Sahel to Lake Chad, Northwest. Families cry out as food prices hit rooftop. Families cry out as food prices hit rooftop. Insecurity growing worse under you. Matawale spokesman hits Zamfara governor. Insecurity growing worse. Under you, Matawale spokesperson hits Zamfara governor, and that's it's on the Daily Trust. Let us now move on to the Daily Sun. The Daily Sun's top story says no plan to increase fuel pump price and taxes. Federal government says no plan to increase fuel pump price and taxes. Federal government states. Lift sanctions on Niger, Northern Elders tell Tinubu. Lift sanction, sanctions on Niger, Northern Elders tell Tinubu. Terrorism, Katina tops list of IDPs in Northwest, UN says. Katina tops list of IDPs in Northwest, says UN. Gunmen Q1 adopt three others in Kaduna. Gunmen Q1 adopt three, one, ab, adopt three others in Kaduna. 
state. Let us now move on to the punch. 6.9 billion procurement fraud. Federal government arranged in Mifili and allies. Land grab in Enugu used protest against traditional ruler and ex-president general. Land allocation. Land allocation committee indicts Okorocha. Committee indicts Okorocha. ECOWAS tightens sa sanctions. Junta demands power supply. Let's take a picnic on that. President Bulat Tunubu on Tuesday said that biting sanctions imposed by the economic community of West African states on the Niger Junta would not be lifted despite the military leader's promise to negotiate with the regional bloc to resolve the crisis in the Francophone country. Tunubu who stated this when he received the special envoy of President Ali on Dimba and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Gabon, Herman Imongot, at the State House in Abuja, insisted that military takeover of government was no longer acceptable in Africa. However, the junta led by General Abdul Rame Chani has demanded restoration of electricity cut off by the federal government as part of the embargo slammed on the coupist following the overthrow of President Mohamed Bazoum on July 26th. Chani, who made the request during their meeting with the Ulamas from Nigeria in Niamey on Saturday, said they were outraged that the regional bloc did not hear from the, them before slamming several embargoes on them, including the threat of military intervention to start to restore democracy. But Tinubu, who was the ECOWAS chairman, told his visitors on Tuesday that any interference in democratic governance would not be accepted by the leadership of the regional body, by the leadership of the regional body. And that's the news headlines for the 16th of August, 2023 um, on Prime Media Studios. Join us in the next hour for more breaking news. My name is Moses and thanks for staying with us. Goodbye.